Many IT managers struggle to keep up with and secure the growing number of USB devices being brought into their organizations. CrowdStrike, the world's leader in cloud-delivered security, brings a cloud-based solution to device control that dramatically improves visibility of USB devices and provides granular control over them. In this example, a mid-sized consulting organization has decided to block all mass storage devices due to the increased number of attacks from USB devices. In the Falcon user interface, we can see that Falcon Device Control can block many different classes of USB devices, from audio video to printers. However, in this example, we'll use mass storage devices. Making policy changes is simple in Falcon. We'll expand the mass media class and select Full Block. With that simple change, any mass storage device that is plugged into a host with this policy applied will not allow any mass storage devices to run. On our host, we'll test the new policy by plugging in any device. The pop-up menu indicates that the USB device has limited functionality. Trying to access the drive in File Explorer indicates that access to this USB device has been denied. As an IT admin, we love that we are able to get control of our devices so quickly and easily. The entire USB mass storage device attack surface has just been dramatically reduced. However, this type of policy isn't an option for most organizations. And unfortunately for this consulting firm, using USB devices is a daily part of their job. They use a company-assigned USB device to transfer information from the client organization to the office where they provide deeper analysis. CrowdStrike device control policies allow for granular control of devices. In this case, we'd like to allow only the company assigned USB device to be allowed. To do this, we're going to create an exception to the full block policy we've already created. In our existing policy, we'll add an exception using the manual entry option. Then we'll specify the vendor and product names. And then select a policy. These devices should only have read-write access. We do not want to permit any USB device to execute code in the event that a USB stick picks up something malicious while being used at a remote location. After adding the exception and saving the changes, we'll look at the desktop of one of our consultants who has recently returned from a customer and plugs in a USB stick used while on site. Since this USB device is on the exception list, we should have read-write access, but not execute. We can quickly copy from the device and write something to the USB drive. But notice, as I try to launch a calculator from the USB device, it fails. I am unable to execute anything from this device as per the policy we just created. This prevents any malicious code from automatically running as soon as it's plugged in. But there's something not quite right with the Excel spreadsheet received from the customer. As it opens, a window stating that content needs to be updated and since the document had all the inventory information earlier, the consultant decides to update the content in hopes of getting to the much needed inventory information. However, as soon as they click update, Falcon identifies malicious behavior and blocks it. Despite a restricted USB device policy, this particular USB device has acted as a Trojan horse, carrying something malicious into the consultant's organization. Falcon prevented the activity but we can also take further action to prevent this USB device from doing any damage. In the Falcon user interface, we see a new alert for the malicious Excel document that was prevented from running. As we look further into the details, we see the attack originated from Excel, and then Excel attempted to open a command prompt and run a PowerShell command. We can even see the attacker tried to hide this activity, but Falcon has no trouble identifying the steps used. In our device control dashboard, we have filtered on the target host. This view lets us see all USB activity associated with the host, and clicking on the USB device combined ID allows us to see if this particular device has been plugged into any other host in our organization. In this instance, we're safe. The USB device hasn't been used on any other host. Now that we have blocked the threat and made sure it hasn't been used anywhere else, let's prevent it from doing any further damage. Back in the USB device policy page, we'd like to make one more exception to the policy we've already been using. This time when we create an exception, we're going to use the combined ID option. 
This allows us to apply a policy to a specific device by taking the serial number plus the manufacturer ID and the product ID and apply a policy to it. For this infected USB, we'll select full block. We see the new rule added below the previous exception. And after saving the policy, we go back to the host and try to insert the infected USB device. The removable media appears, but when we try to access it, access is denied. In this demo, we've highlighted the visibility that Falcon provides for USB devices running in your organization. We've created a basic policy that reduced the attack surface in the organization, and then made an exception allowing for specific devices to run and consultants to do their job. Finally, we adjusted the exception to easily react when there was an incident that needed containment. Falcon Device Control provides industry-leading visibility to the USB attack surface in your organization, while also providing a simple way to create and apply policy to reduce the attack surface.